Data sheets is a horoscope of every electronic component. Sounds crazy, isn't it? But that's what I found in my career. In fact, after four years of experience in ESDM industry, I identified reading data sheets before selecting any component is very important. In fact, if you are someone who is interested to create your career in ESDM industry, and if you are someone who is interested to know how exactly we select component while designing any electronic system in ESDM industry, then this video is for you. Hi everyone, I am Vaibhav Sugandhi, passionate PCB designer and technology startup founder. Welcome back to our course on PCB designing for absolute beginners 2022. I believe you have watched our previous video. If not, click on the i button above here and do watch that video. In this video, I am going to discuss about two important things. First one is all about importance of data sheet. I am going to cover 10 important parameters to look into when you are reading any data sheet. In fact, out of those 10, few are very important that you have to understand before using any component. And the second one, I am going to discuss about the block diagrams. What is the importance of block diagrams and what are the categories of block diagrams that we use? In fact, I am going to reveal you the most important part of designing any electronic system that is all about block diagrams. Without further delay, let's get started. There are 10 important parameters you must watch when you are reading a data sheet. When you are referring a data sheet, it is almost like referring a horoscope of any electronic component. Of course, it sounds crazy, but that's the truth. Whenever we are looking into data sheet, it is like we are understanding what is the behavior of the component and whether it suits our application or not. So first of all, we need to look into the component details. Component details are the important information. When you are developing any application, this information is going to help you whether to select that component or not. It's like a preface of every component where you will understand what exactly the parameters or electrical characteristic of this particular component in brief. Second one is features and application. Features are the peripheral inside or maybe the components inside. Say for example, if you are selecting a microcontroller, then what are the features available with that microcontrollers are listed in this particular section, wherein application dedicated for that particular architecture is also given. If I take one example, AVR microcontroller at Mega 328P is one of the popular. In that case, we will be having a features like UART communication protocol, I2C communication protocol, SPI and so many other peripherals inside. And when it comes to application, it is mainly built for automotive industry. These are the main features and application that we have to look into when you are selecting a component. Third information is all about absolute maximum condition. When you are using an electronic component, you must be very careful. If you are giving something unwanted voltage or maybe over than the recommended voltage, then it is going to destroy the entire circuit. Hence, you have to select the component based on its absolute maximum condition. In fact, by mistake, if you are giving a, some negative voltage or maybe a wrong voltage to any component, to know whether it is destroyed or not, you can identify it whether it is able to sustain that much of voltage or current. And that information is listed in absolute maximum condition. So data sheets are carrying with this information as a priority because when you are developing a circuit for a harsh environment and a very volatile situation, then you must understand whether absolute maximum voltage current are still in the bracket of your requirement or not. Fourth important thing is all about logics and operation conditions. Logics are the important information when it comes to programming or when it comes to communication. Say for example, if you are using a microcontroller IC which is having a 3.3 volt logic and it is only sustainable until 3.3 volt. If you give 5 volt, then it will destroy inside. In that case, you cannot connect any peripheral directly to any GPIOs of that particular microcontroller. 
So knowing the logic levels of that particular component is more important when you are developing any hardware circuit. When it comes to operating conditions, it is very essential to understand the temperature coefficient and also how it behaves in a different environment. With respect to humidity, with respect to temperature, with respect to certain conditions, magnetic fields and electromagnetic induction or even ESD, electrostatic discharge. So these two information are very essential when you are developing a consumer electronic product. Fifth one is all about interfacing details. Interfacing details are something which helps you to connect multiple things with one microcontroller if you are studying for a microcontroller. Say for example, if you are selecting a microcontroller with I2C protocol and you are expecting it to behave like a UART communication, it just doesn't happen. Of course, nowadays every microcontroller is having possibility of I2C and UART, but my hypothesis or the example right now is all about if you are selecting a component with a wrong communication protocol and you are expecting it to connect with another protocol, then it doesn't work. So that's why interfacing details are very important. In fact, the kind of communication protocol you are using has a unique identification with respect to its interfacing. So you must understand whether it is suitable to the peripheral that you are connecting or not. Sixth important parameter is all about pin details and internal working. Of course, we are not VLSI engineers and we are not having a huge knowledge with respect to chip level design or maybe SOC level design or maybe transistor level design. So we are not worried about the internal working much. However, we need to have an idea how exactly internal architecture works or what exactly the protocol it happens within the entire IC or the component that you are selecting. And of course, pin details are very important. When you are designing a schematic, when you are designing a PCB layout, you must understand which pin to be connected to which logic, especially with respect to VCC and ground. If you swap VCC with the ground and ground with VCC, of course, you are going to blow up the entire IC. Not only with ICs, even a smallest component like a capacitor, resistors and inductors are very sensitive to the various voltage ranges. So you must be very much aware how exactly they behave and what is their pin configuration. Seventh important detail is all about typical application circuit. When you are referring to any driver ICs or any special case of ICs which are used in a specific application and those ICs are designed for a specific application, then you usually find a typical application circuit, which is a very helpful guideline for a designer to use that IC in real time application. If you are designing a LED driver and you are using any driving IC for a MOSFET or any transistor, then of course you must know in which configuration we need to use it. And of course, the datasheet developer is recommending certain ICs for MOSFET or transistor that you are using. On that case, we have to refer datasheet to, to understand what exactly the typical application they are recommending. By using this typical application circuit, we are mitigating the risk of working with the circuit. In fact, those circuits are validated in various conditions. In the data sheet, those various condition based graphical representations are also given. So you can validate your circuit before even developing it. Eighth one, footprints and land pattern. Of course, when you are designing a PCB, you need a footprint. For those footprint, you must refer a data sheet. There is a section called a mechanical data where you will find a footprint and a land pattern. Land pattern is essential for a stencil manufacturer. It's a material which is used for pick and place assembly line where you will place the component on the PCB automatically by using a robotic arms. When it comes to PCB assembly activity, footprint and land patterns matter a lot. If you are choosing a wrong footprint, then of course your entire production goes wrong. So that's why when you are developing a footprint in your EDA tool, you must be very careful. And that information is given in data sheet. Ninth important information is all about ordering information. Ordering information is something that a language or maybe the code between a designer and the material vendor. When you are purchasing a component for prototyping or even for a mass production, you must talk in terms of ordering information. You cannot tell them of specification or any other number that you are familiar with. In fact, you have to tell them exactly the same number that they are familiar so that they will send you the right part number. 
If you do a little mistake in this process, you are going to end up with the wrong material in your inventory. Ordering information plays a vital role when it comes to mass production and industrial applications. Last but not the least, programming information is a 10th important information you must look into when it comes to data sheet. Programming information is all about how exactly we can program the component. If you are referring to any programmable device or microcontroller, then this information is going to be very important. Otherwise, it doesn't come into the picture. Say for example, if you are referring a data sheet of 7805 regulator, then of course, there is no concept of programming. On that time, programming information is just absent. If you are referring to a data sheet like atmega328p or atitiny, any controllers, then of course you are going to read the programming instructions and the way in which we need to program that microcontroller with the various components or debuggers that information is collectively given in programming section these are the 10 important information you must look into when it comes to data sheet quickly i will show you what are these 10 information and how they look like when you are referring to a data sheet this is a simple example of 7805 regulator in fact, it is a general data sheet for 78 series regulators. It is a voltage regulator and especially it is a positive voltage regulator. So you can see that these yellow color highlighters are the indicator that informations are available in this section. So now you can see that this particular component features are listed here and the brief description about the particular component is given. And also the ordering information is given with respect to the package and the material you are expecting to order. In fact, it is very specific with respect to voltage and the package that you are ordering. If you are expecting a 5 volt regulator with the TO220 package, then its ordering part number is something like this. If you are expecting to order a 8 voltage regulator with a TO220 package, then the pack part number is going to be this one. When you are ordering these kind of a component, you must be very careful. If you are ordering this part number and expecting to arrive with this 8 voltage uh, regulator, then it's just not possible. You can see that there is a detailed circuit diagram inside. Of course, we are not going to study this circuit diagram in depth because we are not VLSI engineers and we are not concerned about what is, what is inside this particular IC. In fact, we are much concerned about how we can use this IC for our application. You can see that there is something called absolute maximum condition. This information is going to play a vital role when you are using such kind of a power electronic devices, especially the 7805 and 78 series regulators. Recommended operating conditions are the information which helps you to understand how exactly you can design your circuit so that it is a durable and viable solution for your application. In fact, this information is going to give you a detailed idea about the range of voltages that you can provide safely to the component and also the range of output it provides based on the current and voltage rating that you are expecting. If you scroll a little bit down, then you can see that various information is given with respect to different condition. Of course, they are the test condition with respect to laboratory environment, but they are going to help you to design your entire system for that particular application that you are looking for. If you are scrolling a little bit down, you can find a detailed information in even more detailed way with respect to a various component that you are using. However, I am not going to dive deep into that. Now you can see that there is something called application note or maybe application information which is so called typical circuits. So this particular application circuit or application information is going to help you to design your system looking at the example circuit. In fact, they are also giving you a clear idea what kind of a capacitor you need to use at the input and what kind of a capacitor you need to use at the output. Again, not just the value, the kind of capacitor is also given in the detailed explanation with respect to the typical circuit diagram. If you scroll a little bit down, you can see that there is something called a mechanical data. This mechanical data is nothing but a footprint and land pattern. Since it is a through hole component and SMD component, both versions are available. Both informations are given in the same data sheet. You can refer to these information while designing your PCB. Also, while you are going for a mass production to your product. Again, as I mentioned, this particular IC is a regulator IC. So it doesn't have a logic information, interfacing details or programming details as such. 
because it is not having such kind of a requirement when it comes to 3 pin regulator IC. Now let us talk about the block diagrams. Black box analysis and white box analysis are the two important part of block diagram analysis. When it comes to electronic system design and manufacturing industry, you must go with the process. It's not about the result, but also about the process. If you are following the proper process, then almost your product is ready. If you are not following the process, then it is unpredictable what happens at the end. That's why we follow a strict process when you are developing a new product in our industry. Black box analysis is one kind of analysis where you will be defining the user requirement in the form of box. Say for example, if you are developing any product, you are collecting the requirements. Of course, I discussed about the nine stages of product development activity in the previous video that is product development cycle. If you have not watched that, click on the i button here and do watch that one. Now let's consider one example and explore through the black box analysis and white box analysis. As I mentioned, black box is for understanding the requirements in the block diagram level analysis and white box analysis is defining the requirements in a technical form. Now this block diagram or the black box analysis will show you one pretty simple example. You can see that it has a power supply module which gives a power to the entire circuit and it has a sensors which are for level sensing. What kind of a level sensing even we don't know at this point of time. Just our customer or maybe our product demands to add a sensor which will detect the level of water or maybe level of fluid. We are adding that particular sensor, a block. And then we are having a user interface. User interface is all about how we can interact with the external world being a microcontroller person or how we can make our microcontroller interact with the external world with a user that are using that particular product. Then we will be having a power level indicator which is all about the indication for the user to identify what is the power status of this entire system. What kind of a circuitry we are using inside even we don't know. At this stage we are just clear about we need a power level indicator. Actuators for pumping water, fluid or maybe any specific application need to be added in this particular device. What kind of actuator? Still we are not clear. And what are the driving circuit for that actuator? Still we are not clear. But we are adding this block just to make sure that our requirements are captured in the block diagram activity. Then we will be having a wireless connectivity which will send this particular data to the cloud enabling this entire system to be IoT device. Of course, we still don't know what kind of a communication protocol we are using and what kind of a signal that we are using for transmitting the information. Last but not the least, we have a central processing unit that is a microcontroller unit. This microcontroller unit still need to be decided whether it is 8-bit microcontroller, 32-bit controller or it may be a processor, we still don't know. Just we need a controller at the center to process and execute the entire program that we are expecting. This is how the black box analysis need to be taken care. It is just all about capturing your requirement into the block level analysis. Now let us talk about the white box analysis. As name indicates, they are always mentioned in the white box. That's why they are called white box analysis. However, it is not mandatory that we have to mention white box only. You can look into this white box and clearly say that it is even more detailed than the black box analysis. The major difference is here we are mentioning the part number of each and every component that we are using with respect to the specific application. Say for example, with respect to power supply circuit or power supply module, we are very clear that we are using 7805 regulator. After studying the data sheet only, we have selected this specific part number based on the due diligence. We are verifying whether the component features and the capacity will be matching with our requirement or not before selecting the component. Of course, there is a concept called a morphological chart and screening scoring. If you are very much familiar and interested towards that particular information, you can explore that. By doing that activity, we will be identifying uh, several solutions within which we will be selecting one which is suitable for our requirement. That's how we are going to select our components. 
Similarly, with respect to our current sensor, we are having a ACS712, which is just measuring what exactly the what exactly the current flowing in the circuit. When it comes to wireless communication, we are now clear that we are using a ESP8266 12E module for transmitting a data to the cloud. Of course, it uses a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi signal for transmission. When it comes to user interface, we are using a 16 cross 2 LCD display and couple of push buttons for user interface. These informations are defined in white box analysis. It's not just a color that gave their name as white box analysis and black box analysis, but also the detailed information that we are covering. In black box, it is not clear to us which components we are using, but we are very clear this feature is essential. When it comes to white box, we are clear with the component as well as the feature that we are going to achieve by developing this system. This is how white box analysis need to be designed with respect to the application that you are designing. I hope you understood the difference between white box analysis and black box analysis and also you got to know the importance of data sheet analysis. I have a quick assignment for you. I hope you will do it. Try to read any specific data sheet and come up with all the details that you can gather with that specific data sheet. Of course, try to look into all the parameters that we discussed in this video. I believe you have enjoyed the entire tutorial and I also believe that you have gathered some knowledge from this particular tutorial. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. Do let me know which data sheet you have referred and what are the information you found in that particular data sheet. Consider subscribing to our channel linked frequency. Tune yourself to make a difference.